Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we'll pen down the differences between cheap and expensive fountain pens to help you determine the right price point for you. We have a close connection to fountain pens here at the Gentleman's Gazette. Raphael was formerly an avid collector, and a pair of Mont Blanc cufflinks got him started on his menswear journey, and many of our hosts and writers regularly use fountain pens. But considering that fountain pens can range in cost from under $5 to almost $100,000 and higher, how does one go about determining a reasonable price point, and what determines the differences between cheap and expensive fountain pens? That's exactly what we'll cover in today's video by going step by step through all the different parts of a fountain pen and explaining how they differ based upon cost. This video is a general overview in which we'll broadly categorize cheap fountain pens as those under $20 and expensive fountain pens as those over $200, but these are loose categorizations and don't overlook the mid-range pens that sit in the middle of these two prices. So let me be your Virgil as we set off into the divine comedy of the world of fountain pens. Because that expensive pen we just showed is Divine Comedy themed, and in the Divine Comedy Virgil guides Dante, so I'm Virgil and let's just get started. Getting right to the point then, we'll start by what distinguishes expensive fountain pen nibs from cheap ones. The nib is a vitally important part of any fountain pen. Through capillary action, by which a liquid is propelled through the interaction between surface tension and adhesion, the nib conveys ink onto the paper. So without a nib, your fountain pen would be pretty useless. Overall nib size has an obvious aesthetic impact, but flexibility also impacts your ability to have lines of varying width. And nibs will also impact how favorably and cleanly the ink is spread onto the paper. How does price affect this important functionality then? Well, we'll start by discussing cheap nibs, which are almost always made from stainless steel. Stainless steel is preferred by manufacturers because it's relatively cheap and fairly durable. One aspect of a thorough nib comparison, though, is time between nib replacements, and in the case of stainless steel nibs, their durability can actually be a problem. The hardness of steel nibs means that they don't flex easily, or in some cases at all, and as we've already mentioned, flexibility is what allows for variable line width when you're writing. To save money, manufacturers are also less likely to treat or coat cheap nibs with the tip plating that helps to improve the surface tension interaction between the nib and the paper. This lack of treatment increases the likelihood of skipping or spills, and also requires the writer to push down on the paper with more force, making writing more uncomfortable over time. And really, pens that make writing less enjoyable seem pretty counterintuitive to us. Cheap nibs are also more likely to gum up if not cleaned, although occasional cleaning is required of all fountain pens regardless of price, and not doing so is one of the most common beginner fountain pen mistakes. Another consideration is the issue of corrosion. Historically, stainless steel was very prone to corrosion, as chemical scarring from corrosive inks would compromise the functionality of stainless steel nibs. In turn, this would adversely affect ink flow, consistency, and clarity of strokes. Modern stainless steel is more corrosion resistant, but it still corrodes more quickly overall than the materials from which expensive nibs are made. Speaking of which, expensive nibs are usually made from gold or titanium, with gold being a popular choice because it is both corrosion resistant and has flexibility to allow for variable line width, as well as springing back easily to the neutral position of the nib in between strokes. 
This softness will make the writing experience considerably more pleasant as you won't have to push down very hard on the paper and ink will flow out naturally and pleasingly. Another hallmark of gold nibs or those made from similar materials is so-called personalization. This refers to the way that a gold nib will subtly bend and conform to your hand and writing style over time through settling and microscopic wear. This wearing in will make the pen feel even more comfortable and natural, but will require a break-in period if you buy second-hand pens, and might also make you think twice about sharing your pen with others. Ultimately, the nib has the most direct impact on the process of writing, and expensive nibs are able to improve the comfort, ease, and consistency of writing through their higher quality materials and construction. Therefore, even if circumstances compel you to use a cheaper pen, finding a cheap pen with some more expensive nib qualities, like gold plating, a quality tip, and decent flex, will ensure a writing experience that doesn't leave your hand aching and your fingers feeling pinched and worn, if you're using proper technique, that is. Next up, we'll discuss the feed, which connects the nib to the ink reservoir. This is what allows ink to flow freely through the nib when it's in contact with paper, but prevents ink from spilling out when you're not using the pen. It does this thanks to a complex series of narrow channels. Basically, the ink flows into these channels through the capillary action that we mentioned previously. When ink is flowing onto the paper, air from outside the pen is allowed to flow upward along the feed, bringing ink down from ink storage. Cheap fountain pens will almost always have feeds made from plastic, which is preferred by manufacturers because it's cheap to produce. Practically speaking, plastic can actually function very well as a feed, provided that it is properly fitted into the pen. However, poorly fitted plastic feeds can have disastrous consequences. Ink can dribble or overflow when writing, or even spill out when the pen isn't in use. Airflow defects can also have exactly the opposite problem and prevent ink from coming out even when you want it to. Neither of these sound like very good options to us. As previously mentioned, though, these issues are usually caused by defects in manufacturing and not because of the qualities of plastic inherently as a feed material. Accordingly, plastic feeds are now increasingly common in middle and even some higher tier fountain pens. When it comes to expensive fountain pens, feeds should be guaranteed to ensure proper ink flow no matter what material they're made from. But for an improved writing experience, the best pens will use ebonite feeds, which is a hardened vulcanized rubber that is semi-porous. These microscopic air pockets help to equalize the flow of ink and air as they move respectively through the feed. This allows for more consistent ink propulsion and a smoother writing experience. Ebonite is also easy to shape and mold so it can be fitted more tightly into the body of the pen. Establishing a firm seal will help to improve ink transference and also lower the possibility of overflow or spills. When it comes to feeds then, construction is ultimately more important than material. A well-made plastic feed will function well enough for most writers' needs, but an ebonite feed represents a noticeable step up in quality that will definitely improve your writing experience. So, not only will a cheap fountain pen not have an ebonite feed, it might also have a poorly fitted plastic feed, which will turn even your best writing from dressy to messy. Next up here is the body of the pen, which is essentially just a container that holds all of the components that actually make the pen function. Obviously, the body considerably impacts the appeal and aesthetics of the pen itself, but it also impacts the functionality of writing when it comes to balance and weight of the pen. The majority of cheap fountain pens are made from plastic because they're easy to make and cheap to produce. Sensing a pattern here? 
Some cheap fountain pens can also be made from wood or metal, but to keep costs low, these will usually be low quality varieties of each. Stylistically, you can expect cheap fountain pens to either appear plain and boring, because you can't spend much on designers at this price point, or garish and too busy, because the design is meant to distract from the low quality of the materials used. At a cheap price point, then, a heavily decorated or modish pen body is usually going to be concealing inferior interior parts. And remember, a beautiful fountain pen that doesn't work properly is essentially just a paperweight that sometimes leaks ink. To further save costs on materials, regardless of what they actually are, a cheap fountain pen is almost always going to be very lightweight. This will make the pen feel awkward in the hand and lead to an unbalanced writing experience overall. This is because inadequate heft or poor balancing will confuse the way you grip the pen, leading your hand to become more uncomfortable over time as you apply pressure in incorrect ways. This lack of balance is likely going to be the case whether or not you post the cap of the pen on its reverse, as the low quality caps are also going to be made from these low quality materials. Speaking of the caps, these inexpensive pens are likely going to have clips that are either too rigid or too flexible, neither of which is helpful for storing your pen in your pocket. Meanwhile, expensive pens have usually been meticulously balanced to ensure comfortable writing over extended periods of time. And they'll often come in variable hefts to suit your own particular writing style. Expensive fountain pens are made from high quality materials like resin, precious metals like gold or silver, or high quality woods. Luxurious wood and precious metals probably don't need much explaining, but I can hear you getting ready to ask, wait, isn't resin just another type of plastic? Well, yes, that's correct. But because of how resin is manufactured, it's both much more durable and much more visually interesting. So if you think quality plastic is an oxymoron, just compare the body of this fountain pen to this one. Indeed, many users actually prefer resin to metal or wood because it is slightly tacky, aiding grip, Again, more durable, and doesn't feel cold to the touch. Obviously, this is a matter of preference, but again, with expensive fountain pens, regardless of whatever they're actually made of, you can rest assured that the quality of these materials is going to be higher overall. At a higher price point, manufacturers are more likely to put a higher degree of thought into their designs, producing bodies and caps that are works of art in their own right. These can often be highly collectible and even make perfect gifts, especially if the body is adorned with precious metals or even gemstones. One note here, though, expensive fountain pens can quickly become especially expensive indeed, so if a pen is so expensive that you don't feel comfortable carrying it or using it, you will again be left with a paperweight, albeit a more expensive one. So be sure to balance any bling against the practicality of using your fountain pen on a day-to-day -day basis. Next, a pen isn't much use without ink, which is where the next component, the filling mechanism, comes into play. There are multiple ways to get ink into a pen, and many of them come down to preference and personal taste. We cover them all in our general fountain pen guide here, but when it comes to cheap versus expensive fountain pens, there are definitely some clear dividing lines. To reduce the number of moving parts, cheap fountain pens will almost always use cartridges. Poorly made cartridges often have poor ink flow and can leak, and even expensive cartridges can be difficult to change unless they're empty, meaning it isn't always easy to change the color of ink in your pen. Of course, cartridges are also very convenient, but this convenience comes with both a monetary and an environmental cost. 
cartridges produce a considerable amount of waste, and even recyclable cartridges still contribute to the use of energy through the recycling process. Cartridges can also be expensive to buy, especially if your pen only takes proprietary cartridges as opposed to standardized models. And some cheap fountain pens aren't even refillable at all, meaning that when the ink runs out, you just have to throw the entire pen away. To think about it another way then, eventually all of the money that you'll throw away on throwaway pens could be put to better use buying a more expensive pen with a refilling mechanism that works well. As we mentioned already, expensive fountain pens, for the sake of convenience, can also take cartridges. These are less likely to leak or adversely affect ink flow, but they are still expensive. As such, you're also likely to see systems that draw ink through the nib into the reservoir. A twisting or pulling piston mechanism is most common today, but in the early 20th century you were more likely to see levers. And some pens also have convertible systems, meaning that they can draw ink or take cartridges. Systems like these are favored by many enthusiasts as they can flush the ink from the pen to change colors, and flushing can also make cleaning the pen easier. Ultimately then, the filling mechanism is most important as it pertains to your convenience. Investing in a more expensive system will usually make the process easier for you, and will also spare you the unpleasant cleanup associated with cheap and leaky pens that will turn your lovely letterhead into a paper blotter. Very briefly here, we'd like to conclude by highlighting the differences between cheap and expensive inks. Let us know in the comments below if you'd like to see a full video dedicated to this topic. In a nutshell, cheap inks are kept cheap by cutting corners. Pigmentation is low, leading to runny, bland, and semi-transparent colors. Cheap ink is poorly manufactured, so it can be sticky or prone to smudge on the page. And cheap ink will dry hard inside the pen, potentially gumming up the works. Expensive inks, on the other hand, will flow easily and lay neatly on the page, have good color fastness and endurance so they won't fade with time, and come in a variety of unique and memorable colors. Some of our favorite colors include rusty brown, sky blue, and dark green, for obvious reasons. Not only will expensive inks be easier for you to write with, but they'll also be easier for your correspondent to read and more visually stimulating. Not that your florid prose isn't already stimulating enough. Now that you've learned the differences between cheap and expensive fountain pens, you'll have the knowledge to determine which price point is best for you. So, whether you're interested in perusing our selection of budget fountain pens, looking into an expensive Mont Blanc, or again, thinking that mid-range options might be best, we hope that this video has proved to be a fountain of knowledge. Now then, let's get to the outfit rundown, and hope it hasn't been spoiled by any fountain pen ink. In today's video, I'm wearing a casual outfit, good for sitting around the house and writing with some fountain pens. The central element is my blood orange v-neck sweater from Hawes and Curtis, which is worn over a blue and white striped shirt from Charles Tirrett. The shirt has French cuffs, but I've got them configured in a barrel style today to fit better under the sleeves of my sweater, and as such I'm wearing simple black cufflinks that aren't meant to be seen. My trousers are in a plain brown shade that has a reddish undertone to go along with the orange in the sweater, and my shoes are moccasin-style loafers in brown suede from Velasca. And rounding out today's outfit are my two-toned shadow-striped socks from Fort Belvedere in brown and light blue. To go along with the casual nature of the outfit, I've also left product out of my hair and let my beard grow a bit. And of course, for the socks I'm wearing in today's video, as well as a wide array of other classic men's accessories, you can take a look at the Fort Belvedere shop here. <laughs>